Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful and grateful for the day. The day that you have so given us as being a perfect day, a well-fitted day for us. And we are in your place of worship to honor and celebrate you, first of all, and then those who are in service, who have been in service, who will continue to be in service to you and to this country. We're thankful that you have given us a mindset to give honor where honor is due, to recognize those who have put their lives on the line for us. As you gave the ultimate example of putting your line, your life on the line for all of us. We're so thankful, Father, that as we gather around your word, we ask that you would hide me behind your dear cross. That these, your people, your flock, this congregation would hear what you desire for all of us to hear in spite of what I may do or say. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. 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 <clears throat> the scripture lesson comes from a very familiar verse of scripture. Um, Ephesians, the third chapter, at verse 20. And we'll read verse 20 and 21. Mm. And it reads as such. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and forever. Amen. Amen. Um, we touched on uh, this scripture uh, on last Thursday at our Silver Feathers uh, Bible Study and Fellowship. Um, we touched on uh, this passage because it gives us a contrast to what was going on in uh, the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, uh, verses 1 through 6. Uh, and this verse, along with other encouraging verses in the Bible, will give us an antidote to the negative aspect of what we think, how we feel, our lack of faith even, our unbelief uh, into this holiday season. Uh, this holiday season, as in other holiday seasons, um, can be so stressful to those who suffer from past trauma. And certainly our service people who have served in this army, served in the Navy and other branches of the military, the families who also have served along with those who are actually on the battlefield or in the organized services. We all have encountered and even perhaps now suffer from trauma. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is something of a great interest to this country and how we 
we act with one another based on our past experiences. Certainly it is high on the list of the <coughs> medical care that we would give to our service people. And I want to submit to you that we all, at one time or another, have gone through a very traumatic experience. We all suffer from some type of trauma, perhaps even from early childhood, that we have somehow interwoven that feeling, that hurt, that pain, that trauma into our very souls. And it impacts how we react, how we respond to others as well as to ourselves. Some have suffered and been drawn into alcoholism and drug abuse and just an abusive behavior that is not healthy for not only that person, but for all of us. It is something that we will carry with us, and if not dealt with properly, will, will, will cause us to have a negativity about us of which the people of Nazareth had when Jesus visited them. And Jesus began to teach and preach. If you read the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 6 of the Gospel of Mark, he came into the synagogue, he taught with power, he taught with authority, he talked as if he had been to some school. He thought, he taught as not like the regular scribes or Pharisees. And the people there, with a negativity about them, because they saw him grow up, they were familiar with Jesus' family. They even said, or not, his mother here with us, his brothers and his sisters. Did he come from Nazareth, that other place across the tracks? He had a very negative view of Jesus. And because of the negativity, of course of that which Jesus was so amazed of, their unbelief or their lack of faith, in verse 6, it says that Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith or unbelief. Most of your Bibles will say unbelief. The New IRB would say lack of faith. Pisteria. Pisteria is lack of faith in Greek. But it says that in verse 5 that he could do no great miracles except lay his hand on a few people and heal them because of the town's people negativity, their trauma, their lack of faith, their unbelief. Even God himself was amazed at. But it implies that their faith or lack thereof had an impact on whether or not they saw miracles and whether or not they receive the fullness of the presence of God in their lives. Their negativity, that something that pushed the trauma, perhaps, that they had felt down within themselves, that they could not believe that the very God who was with them could deliver them, could provide the healing could provide that which caused us trauma, to get over that trauma. Mm -hmm. that, that, that God 
in his desire for community and communion with us is requiring that we have faith as part of the community and communion of him with us that he would provide the healing that we need, the joy that we desire for holiday seasons. That the lack of faith or the unbelief that one may have has an impact on whether or not you see healing, on whether or not your loved ones would receive that deliverance, on whether or not we can get over PhD. Hmm is requiring that we have faith. A faith of which we have a choice to exercise. A faith that we either see the glass half full or half empty. A faith that will say that if God is here, hmm, then everything is going to be all right. If I believe, if I have the faith, then that which is negative in my life will not impact me to the point that I cannot receive or hear, that I cannot receive relief, that I cannot move past the hurt, the pain, or the trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, 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 that in our lives we will all receive our share whether we think we're deserving or not of something negative happening to us. And certainly not to the degree that those who were, have been on the battlefield and saw many things that we may not see here in these United States. But whatever it is, whether it's insignificant to most people or greatly significant, is there anything to harm for God? Has he ever failed anyone who had the faith that he would do it? So this picture here in Nazareth, the people there of Nazareth not receiving the healing that could have been full in their life because of their lack of faith, mm -hmm. their unbelief prevented Jesus from giving them the healing that they all desire. Amen? Amen. And, and that is so typical of how we are even today. That we bring a certain skepticism on how God will do good for us. We come from a context of bad things happening to us. And some of those bad things hmm, hurt us so deeply Wound us so greatly that we don't think we ever will get over it. It just becomes a part of who we are. And it is intermingled with all of the good things that we would want to do, hope to do, and try to do. Mm. And it waters it down that we cannot be all that we can be because it is weighing us down. It is PSD. It is a trauma that we all can have access to complete healing should we have the faith mm, that God is wanting every one of us to have. Mm, because it does not get to a point in the relationship that we have with God on how we feel and how we think. It is the delight of God in Hebrews 11 and 6, it tells us it is impossible to please God without faith. Mm. For those who seek him, who believe that he is, and who desperately seek him, he will reward all of us who have faith, and he's given every one of us a measure of faith that in pleasing him, Instead of ourselves, we will receive a fullness of who he is in the presence of who he is. Does that, does that make it? Does that make it? Yes, some things 
will always be a part of our lives that when we think about what negatively happened to us, that will always be a part of it. We will always have that. But with faith in God, we will have it. It won't have us. The pain, the hurt, the trauma we will have, that will not be erased, but it won't have us to the degree that it paralyzes us from moving forward. So this verse of scripture, Ephesians 3 and 20, gives an antidote to those who, and all of us, <coughs> suffering from PTSD, some type of trauma in our lives. For it tells us that the God that we serve hmm, is able. Can you say that? God is able. God is able. He is able uh, to do exceedingly and abundantly above of what we ask. You want to stop right there of what we ask? Hmm. We, 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 we ask of God for many a thing, don't we? And that is because we've come to know or think we know where we are in this life. We, we, we ask for a pain relief from our back when we get up here. We know that it's hurting. We know that our resources may be a little bit sharp. Hmm? That there's too many bills and not enough income. We, we, we know the problems that we might have. We know that that child out there is wandering about and we want that child to come. We know that. We want that relationship fixed. We know that if someone is sick or in the hospital, we know that and we have for healing. We ask for deliverance. We ask for a way to be made. We ask for these things. And God here in this verse says he can do exceedingly and abundantly for those who have faith of what we ask for. Ask it, it shall be given. Seek it, it shall be fine. Knock on the door shall, and it shall be opened. We got to ask him. Those who are in faith just ask him and he will do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ever asked for. Amen. That's good news right there. Amen. That really is a good news if we had the faith to know that whatever we ask for of him in his name, that he will deliver more than what we ask for. Mm -hmm. well, even to overflowing more than what we expect of or what we actually ask for. But I like this, the next part. Ask or think. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we ask or think. You haven't thought of how God is going to bless you, how God is going to heal you, how God is going to deliver you. Today, tomorrow, next year, five years from now, you can't even think of how good God will be for you. Isn't that a good antidote to PTSD when you think that the world is crazy craving in on you and that you have no way out and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You don't know where your next meal is coming from. You don't have someone to hold that night. All of that, hmm, whatever you can Think of is beyond what you can think of for what God will do. Mm -hmm. It says in Corinthians, ah, the second chapter, verse 9, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of mankind with the good things that God has in store for those who love him, for those who have faith in him, for those who have belief in him, for those who give their lives to the community and communion of the relationship that we have with him and each other, that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything that we have to think. I don't know how I'm going to make it to the night, but I know God has made it. I don't know how I'm going to get over this hurt I feel, but I know God said he'll never leave me or forsake me. I don't know 
how I'm going to survive this war-torn heart of mine. But I know that he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. I don't know where I'm going, but he is the good shepherd who will lead me in the paths of righteousness. Mm, because I have faith. I have faith. Faith. Hmm. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I have faith. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who has tomorrow in his hands. I don't know how it will turn out, but God has promised that he will be with me always. As long as he's with me. Mm, I got a friend that stick is closer than a brother. As long as he with me, I got a doctor that never has lost the case. I have a will and the, a mineral of the will. I have the bright and morning star. I've got mm, the solid rock. Yes, we all will suffer from trauma. I'm glad that he is the great physician when it comes down to surgery. Yes, that he can slice me open, open up my heart. There he sees the pain. There he sees the sorrow. There he sees the doubt. There he sees the tears. There he sees the pain that I suffer and he can put Something in me that no one else can. You can put in the peace that passes all understanding. That he can put a joy down in my soul that I can rise up off that operating table and say, This world did not give me the joy I have, and this world cannot take it away from me. My God reigns because he reigns within my heart. I see because I have it. I'm seeing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. My God lives. He lives because he lives in me. Yeah. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we may ask or think. It's the power in us it does reside. Should we have the faith to believe in a God who is quite able to help us in our seasons that we're in and seasons to come with the full confidence that he will be with us always. Amen. 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 Amen.